If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this exciting episode of Mind Pump. It's January, motherfucker. It's time to get in shape. It's a new year, everybody. For the the first 32 minutes, we do our usual intro conversation. We talk about if Mind Pump moved to solo podcasting. (laughs) What would that be like? You guys ready? It would suck. 2018, it's the Sal Stefano show. No. (laughs) Don't piss everyone off. It's not true. Hi, Uh, Sal. Then we talk about narcissism and confidence. (laughs) Follow up. (laughs) We talk about pheromones and chemistry. Between people, mm. uh, we talk about Bad doctor. Smell, smell good. We talk about Doctor Bronner's. Is it Bronner's or Boners? Bronner's. Bronner soap Boner. and the wacky label. You got to buy the soap and read the label <laughs> just for the label and figure out what the hell they're trying to say. Yeah. Uh, by the we way, we need to decipher this, everybody. It's a good uh, all natural soap. I've been using it forever. Uh, you can find it at Thrive Market, who also happens to be one of our sponsors. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you will get one month free membership. $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. We also talk about how stress and diet affect the body smell uh, because uh, sometimes people stink and our animal like nature. We also mention Organify Green Juice. Adam actually uses it before his workouts. They are one of our sponsors. If you go to organifyshop.com, enter the code Mind Pump, no space, you'll get a massive discount. Then we get into the questions. First question was, uh, someone was asking us if our pre-workout rituals have changed. You know, uh, they've been listening to the podcast for a long time. We used to do certain things before our workouts to get ready. They are radically different today. Why are they different and what do we do that is different? The next question was, what do we feel or how do we feel about female-only exercise areas in gyms and what does that say about Mm, society? They still exist, huh? Damn society. Next question was, Besides moving, better sleep, and good nutrition, what are some of the other big rocks to improve the wellness of our children? Like, what should you focus on? Watch your kids, fool. To get your kids <laughs> healthy besides, you know, moving more, sleeping better. Pay attention. And eating better. And finally, the last question is, this particular individual feels worse at first when they start a detox program or protocol before they start feeling better. And of course, lots of people have experienced this. You know, when you go on a fast or you change your diet radically, you feel crappy at first. Then you start to feel better. Why does that happen? What's going on in the body? Are we all just crazy? Mm. Also, this is January 2nd. You're right. You're in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. This is when everybody uh, makes those resolutions to get more fit or just to improve themselves. One of the problems with making these resolutions that in our experiences, people just don't have a plan. Like they go into January, like, okay, I'm going to work out. I'm going to get in better shape. I'm going to eat better. What does that mean? I mean, you can work out right, uh, or you can work out the wrong way, both of which will create drastically different results for your body. We have uh, something called the MAPS Super Bundle. Now the MAPS Super Bundle includes several of our workout programs, several of our MAPS programs. And if you do them in a row as we've laid them out, you'll have the entire year planned out for you. You'll be able to work out every single week. You'll know what to do, what exercises to do. You'll be able to see us demonstrating them in videos. You'll have exercise blueprints. Your goals will change throughout the year. There'll be correctional components. There'll be athletic components. There'll be aesthetic components and strength components. Your workouts will never get boring because things will be changing, but we're progressing you throughout the entire year so that when you go into 2019, you're looking and feeling amazing. Also, because it's a new year, because it's January, if you enroll in any bundle, because we have more than just a super bundle, we also have the Sexy Athlete Bundle, we have the Build Your Butt Bundle, the Prime Pro we bundle. have the Prime Pro Bundle, so different bundles which combine different MAPS programs based on your goals. If you enroll in any bundle, you're going to get a free Mind Pump T-shirt. Now, these things are always limited edition. And this is a sexy one. So you're going to get yourself a shirt. They're going to be gone. You'll be one of the only ones that have the shirt, so you'll be super cool. Yeah, It's a good time to enroll in one of our bundles. For more information, all you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com. It's T-shirt time. Let's give away some shirts in the new year. How many reviews? reviews? 11 reviews. Wow, dude. You know what? I got to teach people how to do this You've been slipping, Sal. You know what it is? It's Again, it's my fault. 
Mm. I blame myself. Everything in yes. 2017 was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> our successes and our failures. I'll take respons- we want the new Sal. Yeah. I'll take responsibility for 2018. Okay. Yeah. So here's what you got to do if you want right, to leave a review Adam. and get a chance to win a shirt. Go to the search function on your podcast app. Even if you already subscribe to Mind Pump, enter in Mind Pump. Uh, then click on the icon, the Mind Pump icon. Then it'll pop up and you'll see there's an area. Where you can leave it. You just got you got one of those little teenage finger things for girls right there. Ooh, what are you talking about? That's cute. Right Not there. only is it teenagers, but it's for girls too. <laughs> the pop thing. Oh yeah, all the chicks. Yeah, bro. Do you like twirl with it? Yeah, yeah, no, it just it just so I don't drop it in the toilet. Oh. You know he's got where's the the bedazzling? Yeah, yeah, I think he's gonna bedazzle it. Bedazzle. Bede- bedazzle. Bedazzle. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like a bedazzled vagina. You, you know, you know how much bedazzle it just does, <laughs> yeah. right? I know all about it. I'm so glittery. All right, we are gonna give away three shirts. We're still hooking it up, though, huh? Yeah, nice. we're, give, we're giving away three to Agrotex, I Need Google+, Plus, <laughs> Alexandra Horn. All of you are winners. Send winner, the name winner. I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thank you. Get so. Welcome to the Sal Power Hour with his two sidekicks. <laughs> <laughs> the two power balls, lefty and righty. Oh, man. We each- <laughs> hey, K90FM. Yeah, we're your host, it. DJ Jazzy JJJ. You're here wow, live awesome, with yeah. Sal. This is Stefano. Stefano. Lightning. Sabato Gigante. Take it away, Sal. Adam uh, Schiffer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Schiffer. Uh, Dude, we, uh, we, should, we should do episodes where we each yeah. pretend to be like the main dude. Okay, our, you know what? You know we've, what I'm saying? we've all agreed that there is a special magical chemistry amongst the three of us and that it, Mind Pump would never be where it's at if there was just one of us, right? Yeah. What, what part- Keep that, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Justin are starting another podcast. We're starting our own solo (laughs) thing. (laughs) Fuck you guys. Yeah. What would be, if if it was only you running this show, what would be the worst part about it? Of, oh, oh, the, the worst intro. part? Yeah, the worst part. I don't hear. I don't need to hear you fucking stroke yourself. I don't <laughs> well, if this was I'll the get ready. show. I was like, well, let me just yeah. tell you. <laughs> Where, what what let would me, be let the, me tell you. <clears throat> what would be the worst part? God, I don't know. If you're doing it by yourself, yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, that's easy for me. To not do. only for yourself personally, getting but also, started, man. But also that's as, the a worst li- for me. as a listener too. Yeah. Like, what would what would they? Li- I'd be like- so polarizing, dude. Uh, by yeah. myself, I'd be so polarizing. Yeah, you'd have yeah. a oh, I'd- which is not necessarily a bad thing. Actually, you would it would di- you would divide a lot of people, right? You'd be, oh man, you and I have you that. Just in common. have a really like niche market that was like you know feverish towards you. I'd just piss a lot yeah. of people and off, and then you'd have everybody else that hated. Because if I get in a bad mood, then I become. Well, like, we make you more likable. Totally. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I'm yeah. like, you know, mega, you know, pompous asshole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the Ego Explosion Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Sal, and I know everything. I, I know the entire universe. I'm an expert on being an expert. Yeah. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I'm never wrong. <laughs> See, I, I already annoyed myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, all right, your turn, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think people get really frustrated with me with because without you guys, I'd probably be making up at least three to five words an episode oh, and then people will be like Fuck eh, that's it. not that bad think of something worse that's you're something going bad. easy on yourself no really? I would, <laughs> i'd be like captain trail off you know like i'll start talking about something and then i would just go on like twenty thousand different tangents R- ramps and water yeah, everything would just go away from me <laughs> yeah. nobody would be able to rein me in and it would be horrible you know what the worst thing about your episodes would be justin is you wouldn't know what to name it yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> name it later. Like, damn, I talked about a lot I don't of know. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> do it today. Yeah. This episode, widgets. You know, or like just name something. Yeah, you got to give us a better one, Adam. Yeah. Than that, okay? Yeah, because that's that's not that bad. Well, I mean, mine. I for sure, I'm like you. Like, I'm I'm very loved and hated. You know, what I'm saying there's not a lot of middle of the road people with me. Like, oh, I like Adam, he's a good guy. It's like yeah. it's like you either like me. Or you really don't like. We're me. lucky because the people that hate you, yeah, like me. I yeah, know, no, that's why. And the yeah. people that don't like me hate oh, 100%, you. Oh, hundred percent. That yeah. is. For or wait, sh- hold on. Don't like me, like you. Sorry, it is that's, weird. That's for sure. The magic between this. We planned it that way. <laughs> you know, we, we, we took a personality we had, test. We no, I, the irony is we're we're very much so a lot alike. That's yeah, what's that's, funny. That's true. Which I think the things that people 
don't like about each of us individually. It's just the delivery is different, right? Yeah. So I think a lot. So like when I get nobody a, doesn't like Justin. If somebody <laughs> if somebody complain, no, everyone pretty, does like. No, really, they do. Guy. I yeah. never, everybody, yeah. which is ironic because in real life Justin's an asshole. Total, like in real life, he's the biggest. Dick. Yeah, in real life, you guys jerk. would definitely like Justin or Sal. I was more. like a bully, so this is all new to yeah, me. Yeah, he like he hits kids and just yeah. random kids, <laughs> <laughs> just random kids. Just walks down the come here, kid. Walking down the mall, just fucking slap kids. He's like, hey guys, everybody. Hey, hey, grandma. He needed it. That kid needed it. Push that kid in the wheelchair over. Oh, fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it went too far. Wow, I'm not <laughs> that much of an asshole. No, I think I think a lot of people that uh, over the course of the time that we've been building this thing that have ever said anything that negative to me about any of you, it's it's more Sal than Justin always. It's hard, never Justin. And if it's Sal, it's actually- well, These feel bad for me. Well, it's yeah. actually a- <laughs> Hold on. You get a lot of people telling you negative shit about me? No, not a lot at all. Okay. I'm saying over the course of three years, if there's ever there's been- that one someone, guy. There's, yeah. No, there's- a, I've had the same thing to you. I know Fuck. that. But what they, it's people that actually just misunderstand you. It's never like the mm. things that they like, oh, I don't really like Sal because he's, he thinks he knows it all. And if you meet you in, per, in person, like if you know you as a person, mm. you're not like that. No, in fact, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't come across. You like don't converse all. that way. Yeah. Like if you're having a, a back and forth conversation, they're just getting, they're hearing it. And so it sounds like you're talking to yeah. everybody all the time, and you're they're not, just not receptive people, right? And, yeah, and, like and they're you, they're putting up a wall right away, like ah, oh, fuck you, I don't want to hear it, right? Yeah, and yeah. and actually, you're not like just not ready to hear the truth. That's it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and like, that's where Adam comes in like a fucking wrecking ball. Right. <laughs> you, here's the fucking truth, you <laughs> asshole. Yeah. So I think that the the even the few complaints over the years that I have had over your your personality it's misunderstood yeah. you're i think you're mis and i think i'm misunderstood i think for a lot of people that think i'm this arrogant we, i mean fuck we i don't know who started it who nicknamed me the ego to start uh, this but it, people took that and ran like i'm this super cocky type of person and i'm very confident 100 percent. but i don't i don't think i'm a i, don't, I think i'm pretty humble too dude there's a very humble so i think that was something i used to teach to my staff all the time was that you're very yeah. confident in your humbleness you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're a little cocky about being humble. We need yeah. to fix that. No, I'm just but I used to tell people that I think the the, the truest or greatest art to being a, a really good leader is to be ultra confident yet humble at the same time. Yeah. I think to be a you, great leader, you have, you have to. You have to. Who was it? It was a psychology te the the test that we took. Mm -hmm. So this is an old episode. So if you want to, I don't know if you can find it. It's way back in the. I'm oh, sure the, in the type of narcissism. Yeah, and we got yeah. we all got this really in-depth psychology test done on us by an actual psychology professor and a good friend of mine. And she, we all ranked higher than normal in narcissism, which mm -hmm. sounds, Way higher, which top. sounds bad. Mm -hmm. And when we first looked at it, we're like, oh shit. And she goes, no, no, no. She goes, if entrepreneurs and uh, leaders always tend to uh, score higher in narcissism because you have to, like if you, you have to think you're good or better than most people in order to lead them. Otherwise, why would you? Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. feel you're you're ready for it, or yeah. you're not you're not will or you're not uh, worthy of. So it. I felt better about that. Yeah. yeah. When she said <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Well, well there's little some vindication. There's some that. truth that though. If you're going to be leading, you can't lead. You and have not to be, have some self. You can't you can't be confident. You can't not be confident and lead a group of people in a direction. Otherwise, they'll stop it's following. Work. Listen, and man. Then you're taking a walk by yourself. I am not going to follow yeah. a dude that's like, all right, everybody. I think. It might be safe if yeah. we go maybe this way. Yeah. We yeah. might. It maybe. I think it's okay. What do you guys think? I think what the bears think? are sleeping. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. I'd be like, Fuck you better that fucking guy. know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll follow the guy that's like, oh, for sure, it's this way. Uh, even if he doesn't know what's going on, right? Yeah. right. Yeah, You're gonna yeah, be like, yeah, well, yeah. if he's that confident, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> he might. We'll take a sword. That's my secret. Whatever. That's really my secret. If you really think about it, yeah, mm -hmm. is you just if you if you believe it. They'll believe it. That's it. So you have to trick yourself. I believe that. You have you to do, trick you yourself do. into believing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you and I have the same, would have the same issue with our show. We'd have a, a group of people that enjoy it, that totally identify with us and like, or relate to us. Like oh. You'd have more bros. I'd have more hippies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because when you look at the people that don't like each of us, that's probably you turn off the bros because you feel like you and they feel like you insult them yeah. a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I think that when they can figure out how to use their iPhone to click. And on I them. think like the the, <laughs> the, the super intellects <laughs> that <laughs> hang on to every word and everything like that. They, yeah. You know, because I'm typical. I fumble yeah. shit around. Hey man, they don't, they don't like. that. I tell you what, I learned this a long time ago. Life is too short to give a shit about what other random people like think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the irony of that all is, and this is a, something I figured out relatively recently. The irony of it is, 
the less you the, the less you start caring the more people actually like start to the like more you. people respond to it yeah, yeah. like yeah, they, they want that it's like refreshing you know it's like totally. when somebody is just completely themselves and they give zero fucks it's like right i love those people dude totally i remember as a little kid all you wanted to do is be like everyone else because god forbid you stood out yeah. right if yeah. you're in elementary school and junior high if you stood out it was a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But then as you got older, if you were like everybody else, you it wasn't a good thing. Like the guy that stood out was the one that got the attention. He's the one that got the girls. He's the one that, yeah. you know, was, you know, everybody kind of appreciated, right? Yeah. It was that weird person. Against and, the grain. And I appreciate weird people. I really, really do. And I don't, I don't mean weird as in like you're, you're uh, you know, pick your scabs off and eat them weird. Oh. I mean, Ugh. You're just, uh, you're, you're just, you don't mind. Because I think everybody's weird mm-hmm. if they're just really, truly themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're out in society and you're really just who you really are, mm-hmm. I think most people look at you and be like, yeah, that guy's a little weird. I smell my own armpits. Yeah, they're a little That's bit That's what weird. I do. Do you smell your armpits? Sometimes. Everybody does. Yeah. You so. want to know, what's, here's what's weird. This is my, <laughs> she's going to be so mad. Hmm. What? Uh, I cannot tell. <laughs> I like how you preface that. Sorry, one. Jessica. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wherever this goes. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I cannot tell if my girlfriend has BO. I can't tell. Wow. And you've like, really done a, uh, an investigative job. Oh, yeah. Job. Like, she'll be like, oh, man, I just worked out it's and whatever. You're, you're attracted to her pheromones. Exactly. Her, her but it's so weird because yeah. I don't remember who it was. Her dad was over something. He was teasing her because she had worked out. was in the morning. We hadn't showered. And he's like, oh, you, you know, he's like, you, you got BO. And, you know, we start laughing. And so then she checks and she's like, oh, I do. I'm going to go shower. So then I'm like, come here. I'm like, I can't smell bad on you. Like, I just smell you and it doesn't smell bad. I used to think that's that that, pheromone. I, I used we're to like think dirty animals, though. I, I, like, yeah. I like it. I, was yeah. like, I wasn't going to say that, yeah. but it's true, dude. Yeah. Well, I, I get, get around. Yeah. I used to think like that was a sign of that's the person gross. you're supposed to be with, right? If you have, like, if you're attracted to their pheromones and you're attracted to their pheromones. But I also think that there's so many other. Now, I think back maybe uh, we evolved that way, right? So I think maybe. Back in the days, like that was or before communication and things like that. Like it was, it was, it was just probably smell. You walked up, yeah. oh, wow, there's this match, and then all of a sudden there's chemistry there. Where now you could have that like smell thing going on with someone. Like, oh man, her pheromones, her her smell is just amazing. Yeah. But then she's a fucking bitch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like <laughs> imagine so, if we could. Especially yeah. she smells good when she's stinky. Yeah. I don't give a fuck because she's a bitch, dude. Yeah. So I don't want nothing to do with her. You know, so there's, there's, it reminds other... me of dogs that go around smell each other's assholes. It's like they they know everything about them after that. Yeah. yeah. I won't go that far. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking about armpits. Okay, I'm not like, hey, babe, come here. Hey, listen, yeah. blow one in my face. No, it's uh, so I do think it's it's a it's a it's a <laughs> redeeming quality that somebody can have now, but it's not like it used to so be. So it it's not gonna it doesn't mean you're compatible in all areas. Of course it just not. means your DNA hmm. is because they've actually done studies on this, and I'm not gonna fucking tell you where the study is. Okay, <laughs> before I get a bunch of messages, um, I need a, a use reference, Google, please. I, you, I get people who ask me. Add like, a glossary. Hey, yeah. Sal, can you tell me the study that you referred to that said 0.7 grams of protein per pound? I'm like, all you got to do is this. Yeah. Google, Google that exact question. You just, yeah. Yeah. Google the yeah. same question yeah. you just asked But me. anyway, they've, <laughs> done, like- they've done studies on this, and people who like each other's smells, they'll do like DNA tests, and they'll find that they'll be highly compatible uh, with their, like if they would have offspring, hmm. where their likelihood of having a healthy offspring uh, is much higher based off of that. So I don't think it's telling you, like, this is the person we'll be with for 10, 20 years. It's telling you, I want to bang this person and then our, our genes will probably mix mm. well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, no, I, she can't. It's weird, man. I'll smell her and I'll just be like, smells good to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. And you guys don't like my smell, so that's good. No. no. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm not, not, yeah, I'm not. A, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Not, yeah, I'm not a fan of All right, smell. so I'm going to read something to you. I'm not going to tell you what I'm reading. See if you guys can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> All right. I it like says, this game. First, if, I, if I'm not for me, who am I? Nobody. Whoa. Second, Yes, if I'm only for me, what am I? Nothing. Third, if not now, when? Once more, unless constructive, selfish, I work hard. Like Mark Spitz, perfecting first time. Absolute nothing can help protect me. Fourth, only hard work can save us. But if we, can, but if we teach only our clan, we are all hated then. And it just continues on and on and on. Whoa. Yeah. I'll, I'll read, Sounds I'll, like a high poem. I'll read one more part on this. Who else but God gave man love that can spark mere dust to life? And then there's more. <clears throat> so uh, remember what uh, this come? This is from the Doctor Bronner's. Oh, you! That's, I knew it. Magic. It soap. sounded wacky enough to be that. Dude. Soap. Yeah. So here's the deal. Like it's it is fucking weird, but it's it's more than weird. 
Yeah. It's more than weird. I, if you like break it down. I feel like some of our smart listeners needs to go. Okay, this is what you do. Dr. Bronner soap, by the way, great product. Yeah. I've been using it for Amazing. years. Amazing. Uh, uh, Thrive Market sells it for hella cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I get it for something like 40%. I literally get like all versions of soap, you know, from Dr. Bronner. I love their soap. Yeah. They've yeah. been around for a long time. Didn't realize that that it was this fucking weird. The whole label, because if you look at the label, it's a bunch of writing. Yeah. And it looks old school because I think that's what they're looking for. But it's weird when you read it. I know. I want some of our smart listeners to buy Dr. Bronner's, or if you already have Dr. Yeah. Bronner's, like, like let's let's figure this out. There's let's some break hidden, down his philosophy, dude, like his overarching sort of theme. There's some hidden messages. It, well, dude. Yeah, it seems is. a little uh, Old Testament. Esque. It's They're not good. just that. It's a bunch of other shit. Yeah, but yeah, it gets it gets a lot more crazy. Dude, I wonder if you can decipher this. If you'll has find... anyone looked him up? Is he like a philosopher or anything? So like that? I did. I did look him up. Okay, that's and a, that's uh, a... it's a weird story mm-hmm. about Doctor Bronner's. Uh, but what I would like to do is, I think I feel like if somebody looked like read this and broke yeah. it down, someone smart. Someone... I want it decoded. Yes. Right, I bet you there's a fucking chest of gold hidden somewhere yeah. that we could find. Like you you could find. You know what it is? It's something probably, like it's that. probably like you know how they're trying to get that treasure in Oak Island. Yeah, he's probably like leading people to yeah. the, to that direction. Yes, you know I mean? yes. I would. I, it's really weird. You read it's about a treasure him. hunt of some sort. He was a super. I'm not gonna um, lie. I'm I'm gonna have to buy some of this soap now that you guys have been talking about it so much. Oh, dude. I had no desire before. It's all natural. I'm assuming. Yes. It's well, all yeah, lots of natural ingredients anyway. Yeah, so he's uh it's very religious. Uh let me see what do else. They do everything body soap, hair soap, yeah. what is it everything? So it's it's Hands. soap that can be used for anything. It's like yeah. old school soap. Cuz you know back in the day you had soap. You didn't have soap, shampoo, so fucking my, car my, wash. So my my best my best friend, his mom made us this stuff one year and it worked as body soap, hair 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 shampoo and and toothpaste. So you could do all it had. It had just a hint. Do of, that last motion, the uh, toothpaste one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, look. yeah. That was brushing good. your teeth looks yeah, like. Well, a hand I wish job. you guys would have seen that. <laughs> What's, what is the universal sign for brushing your teeth? <laughs> Everybody, now stop what you're doing and make a brush your teeth movement. But close your eyes. See what see what it looks like. And open your mouth. Yeah, while you're driving. Right ah! now. <laughs> while you're driving in your car, listening to my book yeah, right now. Yeah, do yeah. the universal brushing your teeth sign. Right and then now. tell us what people react. <laughs> you know how they react. Yeah. No, so I think that I uh, she used to do this. It was amazing. Like I could, I get in the shower, I just bring my toothbrush in the shower, and lather up my body, my hair, squirt it in my mouth, and brush my teeth. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, that's weird. It was all natural products. Like so everything, everything. Just, was what was it made with? Put it all over your body. I wish I remember everything that was in Beef it. Fat. I or do. Like that. I do remember the my least favorite part was the brushing my teeth though like the same stuff that was going on my head and my body yeah that's a weird idea you know what's really good to brush your teeth with i know somebody listening right now has probably got some shit that they can do that you know what's really good to brush your teeth with uh activated charcoal Charcoal. yeah activated charcoal is supposed to be excellent to brush your teeth but and then it makes your whole mouth black and then it's just not satisfying is like you know lathered toothpaste of course they've conditioned us to want they put soap in there to make it foam up so you think it's better but the lather does Fuck all for you. Right. That's an English term. It means nothing. Fuck all. Yeah. It does zero for you when you brush your teeth and it foams. Yeah. Same thing with shampoo and it foams. Oh, uh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a total marketing yeah. thing. Are you guys loyal to like products like shampoo and stuff like that? I am. Uh, not anymore. <clears throat> you just use suave? Yeah. I, just, I have not. I just like don't give a fuck. <laughs> I think the generation coming up right now doesn't give a fuck. And I think that, you know, we are watching Amazon completely change the marketing game because. There are so many great companies out there now. And now oh, no, people- I think people are still loyal. I just don't think they care about the brand name. I think they find a product and then they like it. Yeah, like the, if, I care about the ingredients now. Yeah. No, but, but over like the, the label. Yeah, and what Adam's referring to is a, a, a high rating on Amazon or a high rating oh, yeah, on whatever, yeah, yeah. way more than a brand. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's that feedback. Everybody wants to know, like, Bro, you know, that's what so, the experience is. That's so free market. Yeah. Because what happened in the past was you you couldn't rely on that because you might not know anybody that's used those products. Right. Because you have a small circle. And you, and you think the company's really just promoting that, you know. Yeah. Like, so if a company's been around for a long time, you kind of trust them, you know that, okay, you know, you know, whatever brand, Calvin Klein makes underwear, been around a long time, you know, it's that's the one. Um, but now, because you can now compile, you know, hundreds of thousands of reviews and get, uh, you know, general rating from a bunch of people, mm-hmm. you can trust that and you can say, you know what, forget this company that I've been using forever. Yeah. I'm going to try this new one, which normally people don't do that, right? I'm going to try this new one 
because it's got a five star rating. Ratings are so awesome. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's it, it is interesting to see how that's it's, all. Taken it's very off. interesting. What kind of shampoo do you use, Adam? Um, I have this stuff. Uh, what did Katrina get me? It's this new stuff that I have right now, and it has that kind of tea tree oil smell that I don't like. It's for my psoriasis on my head. You don't like mm. tea tree oil? I hate tea tree oil. Really? And I know it's so. And, but my girl's it's got an astringent, it. right? Oh. Natural astringent. Dude, it's we. It's great for my psoriasis. It's great for you know nails, dry skin, like dandruff, all these things. It's great for. I used to do tea gel a long time ago. But this is uh, like another version of that, and I can't. T- I wish I remember the brand. I've only been using it for like three months or so. So, so. I use. I'll uh, look it up and tell you guys. So I, in my family, it 100 percent runs in my family to get go bald, like 100 percent. Like I am, I'm fucked on either direction. Whatever, I'm supposed to be bald. My brother's losing his. My dad's, you know, he's got a little bit on the top. Where my grandfather was like a cue ball, but I've been using uh, Saul Palmetto shampoo for. Probably ten years now, and my hair is definitely thinned, but pff, I got most of it. Look at that! No, you have, <laughs> look at it, man. Look at that. You, you have, have a great joy for sure. You probably have the best hair out of all of us. No, <laughs> oh, dude. Look no, at Justin. It's... Justin will never lose a single. Hey, ha- it's all there, but it's it's. Like it's gonna be white. white though. Justin's gonna be white by the time he's your age. But it looks I'll be like good Anderson on him. Cooper yeah. or whatever. That you guy's have name the is. perfect salty, peppery, handsome look. Like you've, oh, yeah. you've yeah. looked forty <laughs> since you were twenty. That's true. I'm gonna say like you've looked distinct. You've looked laying it on thick. You look distinguished since you were twenty. Yeah, you guys are a thing. I like Justin. Your hair is nice, dude. When it turns all white, it's gonna be fucking awesome. You're gonna look like Steve. Martin. Steve Martin. <laughs> I can only hope. Yeah. Right. Remember, remember Steve Martin? <laughs> Get my banjo up. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Do you He's know who a... Steve Martin is? Yes, dude. Do you understand that Steve Martin's one of like the best banjo players out there? Oh, shit. You, know, you know way that? more about yeah. him yeah, than yeah, I yeah. do. You so just fuck got, off. You just got schooled on I guy. did. I got your joke, though, um, Justin. There you go. You. <laughs> I don't know everything. Yeah. I only know good things. <laughs> Important things. Ah, anyway. That's how you yeah, anyway, justify it. Speaking of BO, did you know that if your that your smell will change based on your mood really? and emotion? Mm-hmm. Well, Is change. that why I get oniony sometimes? Change up. Yes. No, really? You're yes. Is if it you're, like anxiety or so so if stress? you're yes, if you're anxious mm-hmm. uh or, or like super nervous and you sweat, that is far more likely to produce the BO smell than if you just sweat normally. Yeah. Yeah, because my 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 wife actually trips on how like little like my bo is like I don't smell at all, and I sometimes I don't shower for a while and I don't smell. But then there's those days where it's like really bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's normally day three or four without yeah the shower. yeah yeah like the fourth day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just it comes in like a like a truck like a like a garbage truck. Wow, yeah. I'm reading studies on it. There's actual studies on it. Isn't that cool? Anxiety can make your sweat smell worse. There mm-hmm. you go. Mm-hmm. I was what, actually, yeah. That's, that's what is what is happening? Sense. Obviously, we know stress is is changing your hormone, your hormones. But what is it doing with the sweat? How does that? How is it changing the smell? It's, so the it, sm- that's interesting. Your me. smell is is a result of your microbiome that's on your skin, and you have uh you have bacterial signature or bacteria signature type colonies throughout your whole body. So there's a particular type of breakdown that's on your eyes that's on your scalp that's on your dick that's on your freaking armpits everywhere is a little bit different but it's very unique now if your ph changes in your skin it will it can promote the proliferation of certain types of bacteria Mm. and anxiety tends to promote the the proliferation of a type of bacteria that creates a byproduct uh which is that smell yeah which is that smell but what's weird about that is why did we evolve that yeah, you know what I'm saying? No. Is it like a repulsion kind of a, or is it, is it like attracting or is it repulsing? It well, it's bo stinks, right? But some people like that. That stink? They're freaks. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't think they think they like the bo. Smell. I got it. Some I do like know. a natural smell. Or it's a good question. Well, because- think of, okay, so if if your when you're stress or when your diet is way off, those two things both can manipulate that smell. Mm. You're not it's like an unhealthy signal, right? It's an unhealthy yeah. signal. Maybe that stay away, sense. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it could say that this person is not optimal for mating with because they are super high not stress, taking care of themselves. Right. Yeah. So, Very true. So I mean, if I was guessing why we evolved that way, that's what I would guess yeah. is that that makes the most that sense makes to the me. Most and common sense. I'd yeah. be it'd be interesting to see what affects the smell more. Poor diet or stress, because I would think it's both. the com- combination. Well, yeah, both are bad, right? 
Because I know the diet will. I, I've seen people smell change just by their right. their diet. I, I noticed a big difference in in Katrina's. I'm very I'm very sensitive to smell. Right, we've already established this, mm-hmm. and so I, I noticed a significant difference in her her body smells when she switched over to ketogenic diet. When she stopped eating a lot of carbohydrates and processed foods, did it like, get better or worse? Oh, way better. Like a, a big, and she wasn't bad before, but I, I, if she, if she, I know, she's gonna back way better. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. He's gonna back <laughs> I love you, honey. You smell great. You know that. Uh. So she, yeah, I'm sure she's not gonna like this episode. No, there, there was a, a significant difference when, she, and she, 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 she knows it because she knows it in her skin too. Like she, she would break out sometimes. Well, I noticed that in my wife's breath. Yeah. yeah, right. All those things. Right? Like, We're winning points today. Yeah. 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 I don't care. She's Doug, we won't tell. Like, we won't release this. To let the girls know about this one, right? Yeah. No, I'm just keeping it real, and I think that uh, she's w- one of the few girls that I had been with long enough. I had seen a change in the diet, consistency on both sides, to make that assumption. You know what I'm saying? Because I hadn't spent enough time with any other woman before, before and after eating a certain way to have something really to measure. Otherwise, it could, I could just think that, oh, oh, maybe she just smells better today because she didn't sweat or because right. she, whatever. But now I've seen it long enough, like where she was eating before and then how she's eating now. Dude, how funny is that? Significant difference. That we don't even, Western societies and medicine doesn't even consider, unless it's extreme, doesn't consider smell to be an indicator of uh, health, you know, good or bad. When it for sure is, it's it's not the indicator, but it's no, it's definitely it's, a signal. It is a signal, one hundred percent. In fact, they have dogs. No joke. I'm not exaggerating or making shit up. There they, are trained they can dogs smell cancer, right? that can smell cancer. Yeah, I've heard this. They'll come and sniff. There's there's a fucking. They have a dog that can smell if you have Parkinson's early early Parkinson's. Yeah. Because all I didn't of, know that. That's crazy. Yes, I believe it though. I swear yes. they can sense death too, dude. You know, like imminent, like uh, a few hours beforehand. Well, you know. bro, think about it. like your body. If you're getting one of these disorders, something's changing in you. Why wouldn't it change mm-hmm. a scent that you're giving off? Now we're, right. we're may, like chemistry is going to change. Yeah, and I think that I really, although humans obviously we don't have a sense of smell like a dog. I think we've been so we've lost our ability to utilize that sense mm-hmm. um, like we used to because I because we're just not in touch yeah. with it we're not in tune with it right you know what I'm saying but fucking weird right yeah. I think for sure this is something we need to consider like if I know me for okay I'll use me as an example like if I my diet is good my farts don't smell straight up they don't smell yeah at all. Well, not as bad. They, no, they just there's no smell. <laughs> yeah. There isn't a smell, Justin. I'm yeah, sorry, bro. I so don't believe you. I have, the, <laughs> I have the same. I have the same thing, but mine's burps. So I have these nasty burps, and I've told you guys before that I get like if I'm drinking soda and stuff like that. If my but when my diet is clean, one I'm hardly ever burping, and if I do, it's not rank like smell Yeah, yeah, they're smell it. But when I'm drinking soda, I'm off on the diet, and I burp. It's so nasty. I'll burp in the car. Katrina's got to roll the window down as if I farted. Oh. Yeah, that's how bad my burp. Is it all like acidy? Like- I, you know, it, it, I don't know. The, I don't know what a, a different burp tastes and like the, the Fermunda. Like yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what your burps taste and smell like because I've never. I know it, it my depends own. on if it's like one of those deep ones. It's like really from the bowels. It's like, God, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah and it, you know, oh God! You know why, oh, just, demon just you, left me. You know why Justin doesn't believe us right now? Because <laughs> right. his farts always smell. Yeah, yeah. He's like, there's always at least a trace. Yeah. You know no. I mean? Like yes, there's a signature. No, there. dude, a signature particles Bro, in the I've air done that it, you left. I've done it in the it's shower. Science. I've done it in the shower. You know, in the shower, how it pff, hits you right, right yeah. away because there's no filter. I've done it in the shower. Nothing, not a single like nothing. It's because my diet's good. You know what I'm saying? What is it about us humans too? Still don't believe you. that make you want to smell your own butt and your own farts. Um. I don't think that's true. Yes, it is. You yeah. want to? Yeah, absolutely. I well, always you want to know your own I, brand. I always want to smell my fart. You want, like, you want to because you enjoy, it or you're just checking. I kind of want to well, know what everybody else I think is experiencing. It, I think in my head, I'm justifying that I just am checking. But if I if I've been doing it for thirty something years and I keep doing it, I keep, what, am I, what am I checking? <laughs> is it working still? Like, you know, but you do, but you do. Yeah. Do, do not yeah. tell me you. Don't, I wonder if it's you an, don't fart and then take a big whiff. Just ooh, to, what am I brewing? Just today? to check it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> why do we do that? Maybe interesting. It's, maybe it's instinctive. Maybe we learn to do that to check our own health. And why? Why do I? Why do mm. I bite my nails? My and health, nobody Justin. taught me to do that. No thanks. Like, Biting nails. Yeah, like you. Oh, so that's a big problem for me, right? Ever since I was a kid, and I fucking passed that shit on to my kids because they do the same thing. And I read about it, and apparently, at first, they used to think it was an OCD thing, but it's it's uh, it's not. It's uh, something that people 
who are uh, if people are perfectionists, they like to do it. But it's not OCD. Don't ask me the difference. Cause I don't know. I don't feel. See, Katrina always like, oh, you're stressed. Why do you keep biting your nails? You what do you? I'm like, no, it's they need to be trimmed, and I take care of them. You guys look at my. If you look at my hands and my finger, they look really. Yeah, so it's just, I'm really good with my teeth. You know what can I say? <laughs> and I don't know who taught me when I was little, but if I we like, had any fans that were attracted to us, <laughs> they're, oh, they're all gone. They're gone. Yeah. They're gone now. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've secured that that <laughs> one right there. Filthy animals. Yeah. But we do some. We do some shit. Right? Why do we Weird have this? Shit. Why do we have this habit to pick at scabs? Why do we have? And it's not things that your mom or someone taught yeah. you to do, or you saw. Well, we've suppressed our instincts. You know what I mean? We're animals at the end of the day. We're such animals. We are. And we we all want to think we're better than that. We pretend so much. We're not. We better shave. Than that. We shave our body hair yeah. in in total denial of our monkey nature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we doing like that? I literally, like, I mean, there's people with like multiple nipples. You know what I mean? What? Like, yeah. Really? You went too far again. You okay. did. Where, where, where did you go there, dude? I'm saying, like, we're like mammals, you know, that have... Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. People do have extra there titties. Some, there are some weird... Yes. Yeah, there's there's did cases like that. Did you say like titties? That. Titties. <laughs> uh, mammal titties. You got to make up your mind. It's teat well, or I, titty. I kind of like titties because <laughs> it's new. You know, it's like... That it's, sounds like a t-shirt brand, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, titties. Titties. It might be. Like with the, with a D. Yeah. I don't, yeah, no, I, we're totally animals. We pretend like we're not. Everything we do is driven by these instincts and then we create all this freaking elaborate culture around all these weird things to make it seem like yeah. it's we're fucking complex when we're not dude we're, we're just so smart we're and, just smelling each other trying yeah. to have sex and that's basically it and food and eat right basically it right, right. we overcomplicate things sometimes that's it bring on the bird he's an animal bird this quaz brought to you by Organifi for those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Alicia A. Warren. Listen to an old podcast. Have any of your pre-workout rituals changed? Big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, my pre-workout ritual is so different than it used to be. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you what it used to be. I'm going to tell you what it is now. What I used to do is I used to take, I used to supplement. Bunch of stimulants. So, yeah. So so 30 minutes before, I would take citrulline. I would take branching amino acids. I would take glutamine. I would take stimulants like caffeine um then i would foam roll for probably 20 minutes before my workout and then i would start my workout now i drink coffee before my workout so all i have is caffeine um maybe some th- and, and the ca- the coffee i drink is chimera so it's got theanine and all the other stuff in there so it's just coffee because i i realize that all those other amino acids and stuff are largely a waste of money and time and now I don't do any foam rolling at all, which is the biggest change. All I do now is priming, mm-hmm. which is crazy because had you told me five years ago that I would be able to work out without foam rolling beforehand, I would have said you were crazy because I had reached a point where if I didn't foam roll before my workout, shit would hurt yeah. for the first half of my workout. Now it's all priming. Now I'm like 90-90. I'm, uh, I'm activating muscles while I'm in particular stretches. I'm doing basically I'm doing a bunch of prime pro stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I jump into my workout and it's literally one warm up one or two warm up sets max and then I'm going heavy whereas before it was this fucking long bullshit, you know, thing that I had to do just to be able to get, you know, full range of motion. <clears throat> I think my mine's changed in sim in a similar way, right? So when I was competing, I was probably doing quite a bit of pre-workouts compared to what I do now. But if I'm also being completely honest too, uh, you know, I'll, I'll use a, you know, um, crazy pre-workout once, once a month, maybe twice in a month. Like when I, there's this, when there's a day that I just really need to fucking ramp myself up. So they, I still keep one at my house always. There's always one for me to scuba, but like I can buy a pre-workout and it'll last me almost a year, like six months to a year. Cause I take it that little. Right. And so, but that was something I was taking on a more regular basis. Uh, meaning like I was doing it three to four, sometimes five times in a week I was using a pre-workout to get me up. So now most of the time uh, I'll have a Chimera coffee. There's some time in the morning or a couple hours before my workout. And ever since we signed with Organifi, um, I've been drinking the green juice. 
And the green juice gives me it's not it's not a stimulant like fucking a pre workout. So if you're looking for something that's gonna just like wire you crazy, like it's not designed to do that, but it does give me a nice sustained energy throughout the day. You know, I'm trying to figure out why that is because I noticed the same thing, but it's not super um what's the word? It's not super evident. It's like you're drinking like boom. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not like. But the, you do feel no, it's like sustainable. It's weird, right? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. I'm what trying I, to figure out what's doing. Well, let me tell it. you is what. It the ashwagandha I, is yeah, it the, the adaptogenic yeah. kind of properties it has. That could be some of it. What I attribute it to is I notice. So the way I use it, right? I use my green juice to help supplement the lack of greens that I'm I'm eating on a regular basis. I just I, I like to admit, or I like to to think that I get enough greens every single day, but in reality, I don't. And in fact. I consistently miss my greens target on a daily basis more than I actually get it. So that's why it's become pretty much a staple thing that I I drink. Although, of course, I'm always trying to get my greens naturally. Now, I've had days where two, three, four, five days in a row of, man, four to six servings of vegetables, and it I feel the same way. So what I think it's more is it's making sure I'm hitting some micronutrient targets that I I'm not I wasn't hitting before. I could see that. And by making sure that I'm getting what I need, mm-hmm. uh, just gives me this more sustained energy throughout the day. So the green juice has become a a staple, and it's it doesn't necessarily need to be pre workout before it just work. I've had it. I've trained myself to be a guy who shakes up something before he goes to the gym and he drinks something. Mm. So I've just switched. It is a ritual, isn't yeah, it? It is. Yeah. It is. And I and I and I've been doing this for a fucking long time. So I've already got the habit of doing it. That's the best time it seems. Like in a perfect world, maybe I had the green juice in the morning or night before bed, and you could argue that maybe that's better to do. But for me. I've already trained myself to have these weird rituals before I go to the gym. I've now replaced something that's fucking loaded full of stimulants, and I'm starting to make that a habit of using my green juice, and it's been doing wonders for me as far yeah. as how I feel. you know. So that's been a, a major... And then just like you, and those that have been listening to the podcast since the beginning know this because I, I think I was the first one to say that he eliminated the foam roll. So I remember we were talking one time, and I said, you know, it's been six months, and I haven't used a foam roll Ever since we started creating Prime and Prime Pro and getting into mobility, I com- I went from being a guy just like you who spent 15 to 20 minutes religiously foam rolling and stretching before he trained. And just like you, I had to ease my way into my lifting to now like I, I prime. It only takes me like five, 10 minutes tops to get myself warmed up and then I'm right into it. And I feel better than I've ever felt in my life doing more dynamic flexibility than doing crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Static type stuff. I used to have to eat and really schedule my eating uh before the workout like an hour two hours ahead of time and like that was like i in my head it was stuck that that's where i was getting all my energy to be able to um you know accomplish the the lifts i wanted to accomplish and to to kill it in the gym and then i started you know getting into fasting intermittent fasting and just realized that that uh, you know, I, I still could have energy and, and my performance wasn't completely dependent on that. And so that's, that's something that I sort of, I actually like realized that like when I would overfeed, like before the workout, it would actually take away from my performance on some level and I would feel a little bit more lethargic. Uh, so that was interesting. I've, I've definitely changed that. And obviously the dump schedule with that, I said, <laughs> drop, drop a deuce, you know. Oh, beforehand. there's nothing worse than having to poop oh. like 20 minutes into your workout. Oh, like I would always have to plan on that, oh, you know, going into the workout. That. Oh, I don't have to do that as much anymore. Makes but, me so angry when that happens. Yeah, but I mean, obviously the the priming's been been a game changer. And, you know, just to reiterate what everybody's talked about, it's definitely something that uh, we've applied personally Dude, it, ourselves. I'll tell you what, if, if you... Pr- priming, proper priming, and when I say proper, I mean it's individualized because a warm up, general warm up, is not individualized to your body. So although you'll get some benefit from moving the body and getting the central nervous system firing and feeling, you know, the muscles feel a little more pliable and all that stuff, you'll get some benefit from that. But if you don't individualize your priming session, you're missing out massively. Like, well, and to make it even more specific. It like, makes a huge difference. I mean, to what you're doing that day. I mean, if, if you can really nerd out and see like what kind of performance gains you get just by being uh, that specific and really getting the most out of each one of those. Dude, lists. I will add, I, when I started priming properly, I was just from the priming, I was adding five to 10 pounds on most of my lifts 
uh, earlier too in my workout. So not only was I adding more weight, but I was adding more weight yeah. quicker in the workout with having to warm up so much. And it's for sure the priming because I've tested it on right. and off, on and, and off. It reminds me of, so like, let, let's use bench for an example. Like you would have to do like a couple sets of like warm up sets sometimes, like with light weight, just to get that type of response, you know, and like I've eliminated that and that took a lot of time out. Right. So <clears throat> Yeah, no, it makes a huge difference. Priming is a very big deal and it's better than any pre-workout you can take. Um, well, remember when we created Maps Prime Prime and Prime Pro, we did it with the intention of like, okay, you know, we got all this great feedback that we helped so many people save a ton of money that they were wasting on supplements every single every single month, you know. You have so I mean, I know some people like myself that were spending 150 to 300 dollars every month on supplements that were just that in my head I had turned into these rituals that I thought that's what I needed to do to get those type of gains that once I eliminated that, implementing something like priming, I'm getting the same or more results than I ever could have thought I could have got from any sort of supplement. So it I, is it is weird though that we do create rituals before we do things that we deem important, mm -hmm. and uh, it is an important part of your workout. I, I I recommend everybody have a ritual before of their workout and before they go to bed. Um, anything you do that's important to you, that ritual sets the stage. And it doesn't matter what that ritual is, by the way. Like some people, and you see athletes have been doing this for years. For years or for decades, athletes have been creating their own rituals where, oh, before a big game, we got to you know jump and hit the fucking picture of whatever, or yeah. I got to wear a particular jersey, or... You know, I put my right shoe on first. Not wash my undershirt yeah. for the entire season. I put my right Fuck shoe on first or whatever, or we all need to sing the song or, you know. And I'm, these are all rituals that people do before games, and they've, they've found that people who create rituals perform better. Now, it's not – sometimes it can be the ritual. Like priming by itself will definitely help you work out better. But it's also the mindset that a ritual creates, which is why I think – humans, we tend to naturally create rituals for ourselves before anything important. So you talk to a salesperson who that's what they've been doing for, for years and they're really good at sales and you ask them, what do you do before every sales call? And I guarantee you, they will have some kind of a ritual, however small. There's something that they always do well, before they get on a sales call. Sales and marketing knew this, right? And this is where pre-workouts got their how they exploded. Because yes, they, they, they attached they, it to a ritual. Yes, they attached it to a ritual. And I, what is so brilliant, and I've and I've said this to so many people, like you think that because you're taking all these things, you're seeing more results in your body because of those things. But really what it is is because you've never been so consistent. And because you have this ritual and you're spending money yep. on it, you've been more consistent. You're What's really rewarding you is your consistency. Mm -hmm. It's the consistency that's making the change in your body. It's not your fucking newest fat burner, muscle builder, amino acid supplement that someone closed you on. That's not what's doing it. I guarantee it. In fact... If you those that want to take the fucking Pepsi challenge can measure this by <laughs> tracking every single day that you consistently get your lifts in with and without a you know pre workout amino acid creatine and whatever else fucking thing your no explode everything else that you're taking you get rid of that and compare them heads up I guarantee if you're true to it and you do as many days as you did with you won't the notice a difference you won't notice a difference no. but I, I I will say this uh, I recommend a pre sleep ritual as well and, and it makes a big difference like. An hour, oh, I, like, I agree. Like what I do before bed, one hour before bed, electronics are off, lights are dim, or we have candlelight. Mm -hmm. We drink chamomile tea, and we have nice, calming, relaxing type conversation. And when I do that, I every single time I do that, I notice an improvement in my sleep. And so pre-anything ritual, it does set the stage for what you're about to do. And so I suggest creating rituals for things uh, pre-anything pre that's important to you. Next question is from Jazz Massa. How do you feel about female-only exercise areas? What do you think that says about our society? Mm. I wow. think it, I think that says more about uh, the fact that women want to, or a, a decent percentage of, probably a lot less now than it used to be, but a decent percentage of women still want that. feel uncomfortable working yeah, out they still men. want yeah. i mean it's we okay so being completely transparent this is something that we struggle with currently right now so we have hired a marketing team for mind pump uh as of three months ago and we've been building out all of our sales funnels and sales and marketing and leads and email sequences and yada yada all that's been happening behind the scenes at mind pump 
And one of the biggest struggles that we have is much of our message is uh, against or anti things like this, like, yeah, like color- separating everybody. Right, separating men from women because the message is pretty much the same to both male and female, you know? And so, but the truth of the matter and the thing that we keep getting pushed back from our CMO is that. Listen, not everybody is ready for that yet, and you got to at least get them in to listen to you guys first, and then you can change their thought process. It it sucks. It's a a huge challenge for us. It sucks because if you create, let's say you create a fitness program that you want to sell, you will sell more for sure if you you take that same program and repackage it. Wrap it with female-type marketing with women in the videos and all that stuff and say, work out for women – and then take that same workout, do the same thing, but for men, and say workout for men versus just selling one and saying this is for everybody. Even if the work and the workouts are the same, there's nothing yeah. different. The only difference is the wrapping. Yep. It, but it, it fucking works, and it sucks mainly because I mean, we are uh, we've been in fitness for a long time. We're purists when it comes to delivering. Mm-hmm. When we talk about fitness, when we talk about exercises, when we talk about corrective exercises, we talk about fat loss, muscle building, all that stuff. We are purist because this is what we've been doing as long for a long time, and it's un, it's just uh, it, it it's not true. It's inaccurate to say this is a workout for women and it's different than a workout for men, because that's not. Tr- First of all, there's not true. It's the same for men and women, and really the only thing that really, if you want to take anything into account, it's the individual. <laughs> Has nothing to do with whether you have a penis or vagina. Yeah, it's all about the individual. What are your imbalances? What's your exercise history, and all that stuff. So. It's difficult, but yeah, I mean, women feel uncomfortable. Many women feel uncomfortable working out around men right. in gyms, and I kind of don't blame them. Yeah, I, I really you don't. Can't, you can't blame the gym for doing that because they're they, they're just going with the well, demand. And, yeah, they're, they're going they're providing what the members have probably right, voiced. Right, yeah. and and they're in the business of keeping people coming to their gym, and they need the membership fees. So I don't fault them for that. I don't fault. Uh, these companies that are doing this because as we're demanding it as as consumers, if people stop buying, if if people if messages like ours continue to spread, hopefully one day, including ourselves, we'll never have to go this route. Hopefully, five years, ten years from now, that you know, women will think this is patronizing, right? They'll think that I don't want. Oh, they're going to color it pink. Why? Just because they're yeah. advertising me, and they'll turn them off. But the yeah. truth of the matter is, you're unique. And most people do want that. I don't know how many times I've got someone ask me, well, do you guys have a program for women? You know, do you have a program for women? And it's like- I think part of it's conditioning too, right? They've been conditioned by marketers for so long that they they have to find the one. Yeah, Yeah. they have to find the one that's for women and for- It's a lot of undoing. And I I think that- we're always trying to to kind of carve like the righteous path, you know, as far as like what we present in in fitness. But it's it is true. You have to be able to to be able to uh, meet people where where they, you know, you, like right here. Here's what you kind of expect, but there's going to be a twist to it, and that's kind of our new direction. Is more like this may look familiar from you know what you've seen, but the, but. There's a lot more depth to it well, once you get in. Think of it this way: we've all been in this situation. Like we had so. I remember sitting down with people that uh, would be considered like a warm lead for me, right? They come in to see an appointment with me. They don't really know who I am. They just know that I'm a trainer. And my desired outcome of the conversation is that they buy personal training with me and they become a client. And a lot of times, in fact, more often than not, they sit down and you know a good part of the sales process for me is asking a lot of questions. And I'm asking all about them and their history, what do they know about nutrition and weight training, and more often than not, they're 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 spitting out tons of fallacies, and I can't just come out and say, just "Oh, that's start, like, yeah, you're wrong. wrong, you're wrong about that, you're wrong." Right? Yeah. Because if I if I start doing that, a wall goes up, and then they're not receptive to hear anything from me. Mm-hmm. And so it's the the marketing that you see with people that do stuff like this, and what we potentially kind of have to do to get people into mind pump is the same thing. It's not that we're changing our message or we're trying to manipulate the market. It's like, if I want those people's attention, I got to kind of give them what they want to hear at first. Then when I get them in, then over time. So I sometimes people will be telling me things, I know it's wrong. I'm for sure it's wrong and I can help these people out. What I do is I get excited because it's like, wow, 
these people have a lot that I can help them with and I could teach them, but I'm also mm-hmm. aware enough to know that if I challenge everything they say right now or what, because it's wrong, that I might actually offend them and I'll never get them to buy anything from me and that was a wasted conversation and I never helped that person. Now, the other, the other thing to consider too is because the market is changing so fast now, like it's changing very quickly in a very short period of time, largely because information now is just so accessible and it just gets out there. We have the internet now in the, in the sense that I think marketing has been one way for so long that now it's becoming marketable just to market differently because now you separate yourself a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, like 10 years ago, if I came out and I said, here's a program that, you know, that, you know, programs for women are bullshit. Women need to train like men. 10 years ago, I would have sold nothing today because we've been marketed so long like that and because information is getting out a little more, it might even be more marketable. I, I think that's part of the reason why CrossFit did so well. Yeah. They were doing shit and they were like, men and women working out, same exercises, everything's the same. Women are going to deadlift, women are going to squat, women are going to whatever. And it kind of became a plus, you know what I'm saying? Whereas the old message was, you know, women have to work out this way and men have to work out that way. Yeah. You know, that being said, I can see why a woman would be uncomfortable going into a gym. I mean, when you walk into a gym, especially if you go into, oh, first off, I feel uncomfortable when I go into a yoga class that is all women, and that's just because I'm the only guy in there. Now, that doesn't even throw into the mix that I don't feel threatened by any of these women because I'm bigger than all of them. So if I mixed it up and I said, and if I if I put myself in the mind of a woman and I'm going to a free weight area, I'm the only girl in there, I'm working out, so I'm already sweating, I'm already kind of uncomfortable, I'm not you know looking my best, whatever and dudes are kind of looking at me, and they're all bigger than me, I could see why it's kind of uncomfortable. That being said, I'll tell you what, I've been doing this for a long time. If you're a woman and you're listening and you're, and you're nervous or whatever about going in the free weight area, nothing is more empowering than going into the free weight area, working out and realizing nobody gives a shit. Right. Because mm-hmm. the reality is women in the free weight area more often than not get lots of respect uh, from the guys in there. Yeah. And if you go regularly... Uh, and I, I've seen this happen more than more than ten times, where there's a woman that works out regularly in the freeway area, and then we'll get a new member that's a guy that acts douchey. The other guys in yeah, the freeway area, regulate. the other guys in the freeway yeah. to regulate hard. They for, become for kind sure. of protective yeah. of her in there. But it's super empowering. Go in there and just fucking do your thing, man, and you'll feel great afterwards. Next question is from Prime and Glory. Besides moving, better sleep, and good nutrition, what are other big rocks to improve wellness of children? Oh, for sure. Uh, l- provide, make sure your kids feel stable. Make sure your kids feel stable and they feel loved. That is so important for the wellness of children to know that, the, to feel that their parents will be there no matter what, that when they, that they'll have a bed, that they'll have food, that uh, if something happens that they can go to mom and dad or, you know, dad or just mom or whatever, and to know that they are, they can be themselves and they can be loved. Yeah, like, and that the, is the so communication important. too, you know, like being able to come in and, and describe, you know, in full detail what happened, you know, in their day. And um, you get a lot of information, you know, if you're, if you're there and they, they feel comfortable enough to come approach you with, with things and, you know, you can be, it's just like really being present and involved, you know, with, with the day to day stuff that they're going through. I was just going to say that <clears throat> I think, and you guys are, I think, great examples of great fathers. So all three of you, but I don't, so maybe you guys don't connect to this much, but being an outsider looking in who doesn't have kids and sees uh, a lot of these younger parents and young kids growing up, the biggest thing that I see that I go like, fuck man, I wonder what this kid's going to be like when he gets older is this disconnect with, with the raising process. And what I mean by that is um, we've never been in a place before where we have these babysitting tools where we could stick some fucking Bose headphones on our kid and plug him into his iPad uh, yep. and stick him in a corner for fucking four hours and he'd be completely entertained, which for a young parent who's working full time and struggling to get by and is also raising a family, boy, I bet that's a fucking nice relief. And I bet as a parent, it can be really easily to get sucked into that of just yeah. doing that all the time and you don't understand the long-term effects that you can it's be It's a doing. tool, right? Sometimes people, like, it, that's the thing. Like, it comes in handy sometimes, but, like, yeah, you always have to think in terms of, like, all these things are influencers, you know, and like, like certain people, certain friends, you know, that they're hanging out with. All these things are influencers, and so you want to really make sure that you're like kind of 
the biggest piece of that pie as far as being the influencer and in, in the direction of where they're going. Who was it that we were talking to? I don't know if it was one of your guys' friends. I think we were all together, and they were talking about how, I think maybe it was Jason Phillips, who talked about the the time that they, his kids get on. There's like certain channels or certain things that he lets them watch because they're educational. So at least he knows that if, if they're sitting in front of this for two hours, they're watching something that he knows they're growing and they're learning from. Mm-hmm. I think that's like a, a big rock and important because real, I mean, you could real easily let your kid just get, go suck down the fucking, you know, call of duty path. And that's all right. he's playing is freaking mucking out for hours on that. I saw that with my little brother, man. So there's a big age gap between my, my brother who's now 21. I'm 36. So we have 15 years a, apart from each other. So I was already, grown up and out of the house when he was still a child growing up and he was like just plugged into xbox like 24 now i played a lot of video games too myself so i can relate like liking to do that want to do it but i remember when he got into high school and stuff that my mom let him get away with like being on the computer through the night like he'd get up like fucking exhausted for school because he was playing video games on the internet for throughout the 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 night and and i now see him now where where he's at currently in his life and he's getting his stuff together and he's learning you know kind of learning and doing his thing but i think he's a little behind on his responsibilities and shit he needs to do and i think that a lot of that is attributed to my mom being a single parent working finishing her degree at the same time plus raising her fifth child you know he just got kind of oh you know do your thing there and you know, I, and well, again, that's anecdotal. It's my family. It's my brother. Who knows? Ever there's fucking you, probably brilliant kids that did that too. You know, I think that happens, but I think more often than not, the kids will be on these devices a lot, not because their parents are super busy working and at home, although that does happen. They're addicting. It's because the parents are also right doing the same thing. That's yeah. what. That's why. I th- this so the, like your, your dad's on the computer, yeah, mom's on her iPhone, mirroring it all, and yeah. everybody's doing it together yeah. in the house, all doing their this own. This is thing. what I mean by why I think it's yeah. a big rock and why it happens all, to me. We all got to yeah. I think every, susceptible. You got to look yeah. out for it because it's really tough when you're the all the, the busy parent doing all these things, and then in addition to that, you're sucked in yourself because you're working and there's a good excuse for you to be on your phone checking you have to set um you have to set boundaries like with my kids i I don't let them they're not allowed to go on the internet unless they're using it for school but they're not allowed to go on watch youtube or my son will if i let him he will play video games from i swear no joke from 6 a.m Till bedtime. Oh, I bet. Easy, easy. I, I used to do it. Yep. Not a problem. Yeah. So I only, I limit his video game consumption to the weekends, and when he does do it on the weekends, and he's smart, so what he does is he fucking wakes up early because he knows when I wake up, then I start to give him a time limit. So this fucker wakes up at 5 a.m., <laughs> and when I get up, and I'll sleep in on the weekend, which for uh, me is like 7.30. You know what's funny, though? He's already been on for two hours. I yeah. like, though, there's something about that I like. That's because. Funny. I, it trains him that there's something he really wants to do bad yes. that he's got to kind of find like a way around it. I kind of like that. Oh, it's hilarious. Because yeah. most kids would sleep in till 9 or 10, and then when they roll out of bed, then they're fucking sucked into their game, and then they never leave the couch. This kid's smart enough to get up in the morning and say, okay, before dad puts a time limit on me, I'm going to get as much gaming as I can. I'm willing on to get up on a Saturday at 5 a.m. Yeah. shows a little bit of discipline. You think this, you think, you <laughs> think these, initiative there, huh? And you think, yeah, you think these kids get up that early for school? No. no way. <laughs> it's on the weekend when they know. But anyway, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, but yeah, I'll limit it to, to just weekends and I'll try and limit the hours or whatever, but I'm not super hard about the time limit. So sometimes it's more than others, especially if I'm busy or if I get caught on my own device and you know whatever it's because they are super addicting mm-hmm. um, but I it's like you know what it reminds me of it's it's really no different than when we all of a sudden had this processed food uh, revolution where all of a sudden we were no longer worried about getting enough food we had abundance of food so it was it was a new problem but you had a generation that had grown up without food so they had the same mentality right I grew up Without a lot of food, I grew up having to clean my plate. I grew up having to force, you know, force feed kids because you don't know when you're going to get the next meal. Now it's the 70s, 80s, and 90s. We've got all this food. Mm-hmm. So we had this obesity epidemic, which is, I think that's part of the reason why we had it. Is there was no policing with the kids because we didn't really understand that we well, needed it's to. Also very and I think that's happening with tech. Like, I, you know, I didn't get policed on tech because I didn't have it. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now that it's there, I don't. We're not realizing like what it's causing. Well, it reminds me a lot of like uh, when cable TV came through, right? So we had TV. Dude, we, I watched we, a lot of TV when, when I was a kid. When we were young, yeah. And see, I I kind of didn't. You know, my my parents made me get outside. Now, part of that was because we couldn't afford cable. Like we had like the basic five channels or whatever it was, and then we didn't pay. We we off and on like we'd have little spurts of cable for like three months and then we weren't paying for it anymore we had a black box and so we didn't have anything cool like that <laughs> and so i was really limited to how much tv i could watch and my parents were always kicking me outside stop watching tv all day long and so i had to play and interact i attribute a lot of that to my social skills i think that because i was forced to do that be mm -hmm. creative play with others do things like that i think it has a lot to do with who i am today and sure, I could be in the same same person, I, or I could be in the same spot as I am today. But maybe I'd be a total different person with my social skills. Had my parents just allowed me to plug into a cable yeah. network and watch eight hours of TV every day. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to. I, I found ways like like your kid, where I would go to my best friend's house like super early, or like I would always make an excuse to like stay the night, you know, with one of my friends that had like a Nintendo, and we would play like the entire day, right? You know, and just eat bagel bites, like, right? That's all we do. Oh man, that like, sounds so long. fun, right? Right. That's like all we did back in the day. That sounds so fun. Yeah. Next question is from Carter's Consumptions. Why does one's body begin to feel worse when they start a detox or a treatment protocol? Before feeling better, there's a term for this. This is not a this is not a bullshit thing. So I don't know if you've got if you guys ever have you guys ever done like a long, you know, detox where you're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know avoid all carbohydrates for a while, or I'm gonna uh, you know fast for a prolonged period of time. Have you ever noticed that? Well, it makes at first you start to feel shitty. Before? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. and it makes sense to me the same process that you go through like when you're trying to wing off drugs or something. Like you've oversaturated your your receptors with all this shit. That it gotten used to getting in, and then all of a sudden you deprive it, and that they're going, "Where's where's all this sugar? Where's all this stuff yeah. that you were supposed to be giving me?" Yeah, that's that's part of it. But there's also so there's something called a Herxheimer reaction. It was named after the the doctor that you know found this out or whatever. It happens after uh, you know antibiotic treatment sometimes. So let's say you have Lyme disease, or you know you have some other you know you know horrible infection, and you treat it with really powerful antibiotics the die-off of those microorganisms causes you to feel shitty. So now you've got mm. like this massive die-off of all these microorganisms. It's like a, it's like a toxic to your body and you feel mm. terrible. And this, so this is a real thing that they've uh, identified in, you know, like Lyme disease is one of them, is a big one. Um, and there are other, uh, I think, uh, trichinellosis, I hope I'm saying that right, is another. But I've noticed this with, fasting i noticed this when i did the when i took the the para parasite cleanse supplements and i did my fast i felt horrible for the first five days and then afterwards i started feeling better and a lot of people say that that was a, a herxheimer effect so it's definitely something that people will experience but what you're saying adam's completely true hmm. you may not get a die-off effect which is i think that die-off effect is is less likely unless you do have something that is you know like candida or something like that uh, I think what's more often is you're getting withdrawal. Right. You're just, you're feeling. That's what I think. You're feeling withdrawal from not having, you mm -hmm. know, sugar or processed or foods caffeine, or caffeine. Or it could be a lot of things that we that are in our foods or in our drinks that we're so addicted to we don't even realize Dude, it. Dude, going off caffeine is yeah. terrible. Yeah. It is. It's a terrible it's a one. It's a monster. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys notice when you do? Do you get the headaches and all that? Yeah, headaches and just like fogginess and in, in the way that I think and uh, yeah, it's it's just uncomfortable and I fucking hate it and so I'm always like going back and forth with it. No, when it's when it's at that point where you're like, oh my god, okay, like I'm so dependent on this, I have to scale down and I have to just be adamant about like, look, I just have to go through this, you know, drink more water and like kind of go through the process of this because then now I'm gonna you know get the benefit. It's all over again. Yeah. So if you are having a Herxheimer uh, reaction, there are a few things that functional medicine doctors and wellness experts will recommend. One is to increase the fiber uh, in your diet because fiber binds to things and it you helps you know get out of your body. Some people will supplement with something like psyllium husk, which is an, a, a non soluble fiber. The other thing is to use uh, activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is one of the oldest. Uh, 
remedies for toxic, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, poison or overload. Is that the same? Because uh, I remember telling a story on the podcast a long time ago where, like, my brother and his friend fed me a bunch of cough syrup, and, like, I drank, like, two bottles of cough syrup. <laughs> you <laughs> get that scissor. And then they gave me all kinds of charcoal uh, to, to sort of help. Yeah, so charcoal does the same thing. It binds to certain molecules, making them uh, too large to absorb, and then you, you poop it out or whatever. So charcoal is the other one, lots of water. And then some functional medicine doctors recommend uh, sauna. Apparently sweating in a sauna and heat is good to uh, eliminate um, like he- some heavy metal uh, loads. I think it was Dr. I forgot who said it. Was it Dr. Bush that said that, Doug, or was it uh, the other guy? I remember one of those guys told me that the sauna helps with that type of thing. But I also think that, you know, the whole detox thing and most of this stuff has been marketed to us to like sell us a package of something that goes with it. Like, oh, here's your mm-hmm. drink every day. Here's the thing, like here's your I, detox. I, yeah. I detox, okay, or I clean my system out the same way that I would if I was addicted to drugs, right? And I've been down this road before where I try and eliminate something. Same way I do caffeine, same way I do uh, you know, cannabis, same thing I do, anything with Diet Cokes, anything that I feel that my body is not benefiting my body, I'm doing too much of. And I don't go cold turkey and buy some fucking detoxing and then like, you know, tough it out for three days and then hopefully get... All I do is I, I assess my my the overall thing, right? So whatever it is that I'm trying to, to clean out. And maybe if it's your diet, you've got a lot of things in there. Processed foods, you got sugars, you got caffeine, you've got energy drinks maybe you're drinking, maybe you've got a bunch of stuff in there. I don't think it's necessary to cut it all out right at one time and then get on some detoxing. Like what I would do is like set a goal for yourself. Okay, I drink a fucking energy drink every single day. I take this every single day. I do this for my body. I know it's not good for it every single day. So how about cutting it down to three times in a week? And then how about cutting it down to two times? And then how about cutting it down to one time? You're going to get the same benefits. It just might take you a little bit longer. That's so much, so much better. Of an op- it's so much better. Right. And it's and it doesn't turn into this like crazy hard thing to go through where you're like depriving so hard. Now, some people mentally, they- They do better with They that. have to go I, I one know. or the other. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like caffeine is a good example of that. If you go cold turkey, you're going to fucking hate life for a good, a good week, sometimes yeah. longer. Um, or what I recommend to do, people is do what you just said, Adam. I recommend people- slowly wean themselves yeah. off to... I actually don't find it difficult at all. No. When, when I do it this way, this is kind of how I weave in and out. You guys, uh, we, we talk a lot lately about my my uh, Coke Zero deal. And it's like, you know, when I, I know when it's, when it's getting uh, out of control, when I'm buying it at home and I'm drinking it on a regular basis, I never let that go too long while I'm doing that. And then my way of detoxing from it is I go from having one every day to having them three times in a week and then maybe one time on Friday with like a dinner that I have to eventually not having it at all. And it's really not that hard. It's really easy for me to go from that and I and I see how great I feel when I'm off it. And, you know, I, I do that with many things that I allow in my life that I know is not serving my body ideally. It might be serving something else, right? Making me disconnected or whatever like that and I enjoy enjoying it for the moment. And I think that's really how... You have this balance, and it doesn't have to be this one way or the other. Because mm. then I, I feel like things like these detox things create the on and off wagon yeah. with whatever it is you're trying to detox from. Yeah, and well, they're they're y- trying to sell you shit, yeah. right? And I like, yeah, I like to just keep it on like focusing on what's going to benefit my health and like you know get me you know a new fresh uh, start as far as like my cells are concerned, and and that's why I was interested in like we talked a little bit about the forty eight to seventy two hour fast. I oh yeah, dude. Collectively as a group, and I think that would be a really cool. I think thing we should still. do that at the beginning of the year. I think we should. I, I'm going to do it for sure. I'm going to try for. A 72-hour fast, and not for the detox uh, necessarily properties of it, but fasting that long, I think once you go like 24, 48 hours or so, you really ramp up uh, cell autophagy. This is where cells, as they get older, Mm -hmm. they naturally kill themselves. Well, you amplify the fuck out of that process while you're fasting for a prolonged period, and then what you do is you activate a shit ton of stem cells. Mm -hmm. When you refeed yourself... Your body replaces all of those old cells with new, younger cells, and the effects are pretty incredible to the point where there are facilities in other countries that do prolonged fast to treat uh, autoimmune issues. So if you go in there with an autoimmune issue, they'll put you on like a week or two-week-long fast, 
and basically will replenish or regenerate most of your immune system. So now your new immune system doesn't have these old patterns where it's attacking your body. And, you know, I'm not recommending this. Do your own research. But this is an old time-tested uh, way of treating some of these disorders. I know in Chinese medicine, so check this yeah, out, right? It's like getting a reboot. I, so check this out. I was at, I had my, obviously our Christmas party. I saw my uncle there. My uncle uh, does Chinese medicine. He's been doing it for decades. Very intelligent man. And we were talking about fasting. And he says, you know, Sally goes, it's funny because the classic Chinese treatment, Chinese medicine treatment for cancer, which they've been doing for thousands of years, is a long fast. He goes, if you if you had cancer, you know, 500 years ago or whatever, they would put you on a prolonged fast. And he goes, what's funny about that is uh, for a long time, people would make fun of Chinese medicine for recommending that. And especially for that, they would say things like, don't do that. You need to feed your body. You're fighting cancer. You need to give yourself nutrients, especially if you're going through chemo, this, that, and the other. There's now confirmed studies showing that fasting with cancer weakens and kills cancer is very anti-cancer and if you get chemotherapy while fasting the chemotherapy is far more effective it kills more cancer and it's protective of the healthy cells so not only does fasting increase your hmm. the effectiveness of chemo to kill cancer it also makes it safer on the rest of your body fucking trip on that shit yeah, right and they've been saying that shit for thousands of years but yeah so i'm, I'm excited dude. i i really want to try yeah a 72 I'm hour fast totally in and uh maybe some of our listeners will join in on that well and, let's do it do this month this comes out january 2nd so let's do this is that when this episode's yeah, dropping this, this goes january 2nd so, so that's when this episode's because i'm going to start my fast the day after new year's either eve or day that's what I'm going to start. So like that would be first. That would be today. Yeah, that would be today when this episode drops. Yeah, that would be today. Well, I don't okay. know. If, do we have to do it then? I feel like that's a little early. Oh, wait a minute. We got to go to yes. the LA Expo. Yeah, I don't want to be fucking on day three of not oh, eating no, no, food no, no, when, no, we go, no. when we're trying to stand <laughs> up and speak to people. When we get back Which, from by the, the way, did we, tell any, did we tell the audience that yet? Have we, we told did. Yeah, we did. We did. So it. Adam and I will be speaking at the LA Expo. This weekend Expo. coming up. It'll be this yeah. weekend coming up, right? That's this. right. Uh, and we're going to be speaking uh, two days on intuitive Nutrition. eating, answering questions. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be a good time. Come and show me if support. you're going to Vegas for CES, I'll see you there. That's right. You're going to yeah. be in Vegas. You fuck. Yeah. How did you get Vegas? Because and me and I'm got- the tech guy. You know yeah. what I mean? That's like I have to do some homework for you guys. How so, I got to go to work? You, you know what else play. is happening at the same time? What? Isn't the porn convention? Oh going? yeah, the AVN Awards. Oh, rough time. To, <laughs> rough time to be in Vegas over <laughs> there, dude. Is it really at the same time? It's going to get weird. I don't know. Is it? Pretty yeah, sure I, I lost might be, this yeah. Rochambeau. Yeah, can you yeah. get? Can you get Adam? I'll take pics for you. Guys. Adam has a dildo. He wants you to get all. Yeah, yeah, I'll get something Dude, signed for you. I'm not kidding. It's been as all the all the times I've been to Vegas. Every I used to go to Vegas a lot, right? And I never made it out there for the the porn awards. And I've always wanted to go out there because I've it would had, just be a trip. Huh? I, well, I've had buddies tell me about it. Uh, it's just, I've heard it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we won't talk too much about it because no. I know your wife's not going to be excited yeah, about you going at that not, time. So she's not happy already. let's just say it's a good time to be in Vegas. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just told her I will video everything. <laughs> so yeah, good luck. Right on. Check it out. Go to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's different content than the stuff you find on our podcast. So if you want more information, you want more fun, you want more good stuff, you want more controversy. The YouTube channel is our other channel. It's Mind Pump TV. Subscribe and watch. It's our third leg. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.